All right. Um, well, hello everybody. I'm the Cappy Thirty of One Hundred One here today with a uh, Kerbal Space Program tutorial on how to navigate using uh, Rover Dude's Alcubi Air Drive mod. Uh, you're not familiar with what an Alcubi Air Drive is? Basically, it's a warp drive. It's actually a faster than light engine. Uh, can really help you get around the system a whole hell of a lot faster than you would in ordinary drives. And I've had a couple people ask me in recent days to go ahead and uh, show me, t t uh, just give a quick tutorial on how you navigate with this with this uh, mod. And I'll go ahead and do some of the other little basics about it uh, as well. All right, first things first. We're over here in, uh, over in orbit of Elu. I have my warp probe in front of me. This is the Phoenix Four warp probe. Um, I don't know why I called it Phoenix 4, really, it's just kind of just a name, whatever. Uh, some of the quick features of this probe you may notice. Um, we have a grand total of eight Gigantor solar panel arrays uh, on this uh, ship, and, uh, you know, really, is this far away from Kerbal? It's, uh, they're not going to do me a whole lot of good. This is, they're there for whenever we get much closer to Kerbal, actually. Uh, you'll also see that we have some RTGs, you know. RTGs, you may not think of them too much in your uh, standard uh, KSP stock game, but whenever you're dealing with a warp ship, you want to be able to go anywhere at any time in the system, RTGs really are your uh, best source of power. As far as the warp drive itself concerned, it's this unit here, uh, the main Alcubi air drive. I'm, uh, this ship uses the uh, 0 0.625 meter engine. Uh, there is actually a second, uh, second size available at 2.5 meters, and it produces a much larger bubble. Uh, and uh, it costs a lot more too. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the engine on real quick. Let me make sure that I'm not actually throttled up. Okay. Yeah. One of the first things you need to know about this mod is that everything that you want to travel uh, at warp speed, it has to fit in the bubble. Uh, for the 0 0.625 0 .625 meter model, the bubble is not particularly large. Um, for the 2.5 meter um, engine, the bubble's about 16 meters, give or take, uh, in radius. So, you know, basically anything you can fit in there is great. If you can't fit it in there, don't try because as soon as you engage that warp engine, it's going to shear straight off, or could blow up anything. I'm going to go ahead and shut this off right the second. We're not quite ready to go anywhere just yet. Um, now, why does this ship has got have eight gigantic solar panels on it? Well, it's because you use electrical power power the exotic matter generator. Exotic matter is how the main drive system works. As you warp, you will you will go ahead and burn through the exotic matter. Uh, and you have the ability to recharge it. Now the, the power requirements for that are just absolutely massive. Uh, for the two and a half meter drive, it's 10,000 units of electrical energy per second. And that generates one unit of, electro, of, of exotic matter per second. Uh, you're going to see, obviously, I mean, I'm clear how, clear how out of ELU here, uh, these solar panels aren't going to generate hardly that much at all. However, in close proximity to Kerbal, they will produce enough power to, 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 power, the, to power the exotic matter generator. In the actual engine itself, we only need three RTGs. Okay, now, as far as navigating, the things about, one of the things about the, the Alcubier drive that you need to be aware of is that it doesn't actually produce any thrust. It produces no acceleration whatsoever. Uh, because it produces no acceleration, it does not generate any delta V. So, you know, what good is it then? Well, what it does is that it translates your position from one spot to another. Uh, so, wherever your velocity vector is, your, 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 the magnitude of your velocity vector, which of course is your speed, and your director, uh, the direction of that vector, whatever time that you start warping is, it's going to be conserved uh, as you warp around the system. That lets you uh, use your nav ball uh, to it, you know, basically as a set of polar coordinates. You know, if I warp Nadir, I'm sorry, if I warp Zenith, point my ship Zenith, I'm actually currently pointing directly away from Elu right this second. I'm going out this direction. And if I point my ship nadir and I start warping, I will be warping directly toward Elu. So if you think about that, you know your your nadir zenith axis will affect your range to whatever body it is that you're orbiting around. 
Then you have your east and west axis, your 90 to 70 axis. If I were to begin to warp at 90 degrees, I would actually travel, you know, travel around in a circle around Elu, uh, you know, and try to basically hold my same altitude. This is my altitude number here. You know, right now I'm at 418 kilometers. Let's go ahead and do this. Let me go ahead and demonstrate this real quick. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn my engine on, and we're just going to go ahead and do a little short warp. I'm going to try to hold her at 90. Uh, on course at 90, and you can see that my altitude is not changing. You can see, that, however, that my uh, okay. When you're traveling close to the speed of light, you know, even a little bit nadir, even a little bit zenith, is going to adjust your altitude. I guess I'm not even really close to the speed of light right now. I'd have to look at my ship to see just exactly how far I'm traveling. Why is the shape of my orbit changing? Well, like I say, the velocity vector does not change as you're warping. But you, the position of that vector does. Oops. Okay. How can you tell whenever you're going straight in and out toward a planet? Well, you look for your, uh, your normal markers, the purple ones here. Whenever they are directly lined up. I have now changed the, the motion, you know, changed my orbit such that I am now traveling, you know, in a straight line, direct, almost directly, you know, directly away from the Elu. This is actually an important, uh, important little maneuver. Um, this one was actually first uh, created by uh, a forum member, Dread First, back in November of 2017. And, uh, well, I'm going to demonstrate this a little bit uh, further on as we go ahead and get more and more into the mod. Um, Okay, so actual navigation between planets. Let's let's go ahead and do some of the, a practical example here. I've haven't been to Tylo in a couple of uh, in a couple of uh, versions of the game, so I think I'll go ahead and go there. First things first, however, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to show you guys a couple of, of ways of doing this. The first way is actually going to be the short way. Uh, let me go ahead and aim directly away from Elu. And of course, quick save because I want to screw this up. I'm going to start warp by warping directly away from the planet until I escape Elu's SLI. We'll just do that real quick. Okay, here I am out in the interplanetary space at this point. And. Okay. So Tylo, of course, is in orbit around Joule. Joule is over here. You can see on your map mode, uh, Joule is orbiting around Kerbal at 43, meters per second. Elu is uh, orbiting at 2765.9 meters per second. So, you know, one of the things we want to go ahead and try to do uh, to get just just to get to Joule is to try to match up our velocity vector. Now, there's two components to any vector. Of course, there's the magnitude of that vector, how how big it is and the direction in which that vector is pointing. Now, all the planets in the Kerbal system will, are traveling to the east, eastward around it, because none of them are in retrograde orbits. So right now, you know, as far as you're looking down, down on the Kerbal system from the top, Elu's east is generally going this way, toward the top of my screen here. And it's traveling at a rate of 2765.9 meters per second. Joule, however, its east is about roughly this way. Right now it's actually kind of pointed towards Elu, if you want to know the absolute truth. And it's also traveling faster, and of course that's because, of course, you know, hey, we've got ourselves a nice little uh, formula for uh, calculating orbital velocity, and it's, it's basically, it's based on the gravitational parameter uh, of Kerbal, its mass times the gravitational constant of the universe. You divide that by whatever uh, radius uh, altitude uh, the planet is orbiting at. Uh, you take the square root of that, you get its orbital velocity. So basically what that rule uh, says is that you know, anything that is uh, orbiting closer to a body will be going faster. I mean, this is the same thing that helps you out with docking, if you're ever uh, doing any docking moves. So, before I can get to Tylo, I have to get to Jewel. Uh, now, the, ideally, I would match up both the direction and the speed at which Jewel is traveling around uh, Kerbal. 
uh, around the curveball. And you may ask, you know, well, if your drive doesn't actually change your velocity vector at all, I mean, how are you going to do this? Well, the simple answer is with gravity. Okay, I still have my warp drive engaged. I'm going to go ahead and warp directly towards curveball. Once again, I'm pointing Nate here just to do that. Full power here. Oh, my thrust limiter is set. Let me go ahead and turn that up to full, full blast. Get back into map mode before I crash into the sun. A, uh, an altitude I want you guys to remember out there is 1.64 gigameters. What's so special about 1.64 gigameters? Well, this is through experimentation. That is actually the altitude at which six, uh, I'm sorry, eight uh, gigantic solar panels will produce the necessary amount of power to uh, power the exotic matter generator. Okay, so I'm now the altitude I want to be over the over curveball. Uh, I want to actually, since I want to uh, go to a planet that's closer in to the sun, I'm going to warp to the west. And once again, I'm going to try not to, try not to mess this up too badly. Okay, and basically I'm just looking for the, for the uh, normal marker there. Okay, 1.64, and we're going to kill it right there. That's close enough for jazz. Now you see that Kerb Kerbin's uh, uh, gravity is already starting to make me increase speed because I'm headed toward the sun right now. Uh, you'll hit periapsis in three days. Well, that's the direction I'm going. I'm going toward the star. All right, I will go ahead. I'm going to set. It's uh, my rendezvous. I'm going to set Joule, and I'm going to go ahead and put this over on target velocity. Well, that's definitely not the direction I want it to go, is it? I want it to be going downward, not upward. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, recharge my uh, engine while I'm here. I should be at the correct distance to do so. Go ahead and uh, point at the sun. We'll get the panels out. And basically, you know, you start looking at this. Anytime the energy, if you've got you know, I've got eight panels here. Um, it's 10,000 per second, so if it goes over 1250, you know, that's, you know, 10,000 divided by eight is 1250, so if the energy flows over that, yeah, you've got enough power. Okay, I'll go ahead and start my exotic matter generator, and you can see that it is slowly recharging the amount of exotic matter I have. Notice that I'm not doing this with the drive on. You, you, you really, you, you don't want to be running the drive and the exotic matter generator at the same time. Uh, bad things can't happen. Okay, well, it looks like I'm going to have to do this the, the hard way. I was planning on doing this the easy way to uh, to do the uh, trip out to Jewel, but you know, I'm going to I'm going to begin just long enough to go ahead and uh, to uh, recharge my exotic matter generator. Let me go ahead and speed this up just a hair here. Okay, now that that's full, I'm going to go ahead and shut it off and collapse my panels here. Well, this is annoying. Okay, I'm going back to orbital velocity mode. Um, okay. One of the other key concepts that is used a lot with this mod is the notion of a fail-safe altitude. Um, you know, Rover Dude, who created the mod, uh, included this fail-safe altitude so that you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't run your ship into planets, which is fine and dandy dandy and fine. You know if you if you are below your fail-safe altitude, um, then you will uh, you cannot engage the warp drive. And if it is active, then it will go ahead and cl it'll collapse the bubble at that point. Um, one of the, the, the real key to, to navigating with the Alcubierre drive mod is to know what the fail-safe uh, what the orbital velocity is at fail-safe altitude. 
if you're going that fast relative to whatever body it is you're trying to go to, if you're trying to go you know, that 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 uh, orbital velocity at the fail-safe altitude is the maximum that you can go, at maximum speed at which you can go in order to make an orbit uh, around the around the target body uh, with warp drive alone. Okay, so. So yeah, first thing I'm gonna have to do is go to Jewel. I I was hoping to pull, be able to put my uh, uh my chart here for you guys. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, find it here real quick. And here's the failsafe velocities chart. Okay. I'm gonna leave this up for a few seconds. I'm hoping you guys uh, out there and. YouTube land will actually, you know, be able to use this information. Oh, goody. The stuff for Elus. This is 420.91, okay? I'm mean, Anyway, I'm just going to leave this up for a few seconds here, just so you guys, you know, take a screenshot, get this information, and jot it down. This is how you navigate the system, okay? Any any of the normal bodies in the Kerbal system. I am currently working for on uh, making calculations for some of the other more popular uh, expanded planet packs. Anyway, uh, to make Joule's orbit, I need to be... Go oh, I'm with the... this is the 0.625 uh, meter here. Uh, to make Joule's orbit, I want to have my speed no faster than 4,300... let's say 4,340 meters per second. I'm going to go back in the game real quick. Uh, actually, I'm below that right now. Okay, then I guess we'll do this the fast way. Uh, I do have Joule selected, so I'm just going to aim for my target real quick. And we're going to go. Re engage the drive here. And. And we're going to run. Sphere of influence. One thing about this, you do want to watch what you're doing because you definitely do not want to run into a moon. Um, let me go back here for a second. What was the uh, what was the altitude? Uh, nine million meters. Okay, I can't go any closer than nine million meters or uh, nine thousand kilometers. That's as close as I can get to Kerbal, uh, to to Jewel here. Now you may have noticed that you know our relative velocity over Kerbal is about the same as our orbital velocity over uh, Joule right now. Okay, I'm still warping toward it at that speed. Once again, 9,000 kilometers is as close as I can expect to get. All right, excellent. I'm within a planetary system at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and turn down the turn my thrust limiter down. That's always a good move. Almost always a good move, anyway. Let's still go ahead and continue to increase this here. Well, that's pretty awesome. I got a lathe encounter there. Okay, 8.9 megameters. I hit my failsafe altitude. Uh, which way am I going? Okay, I'm headed toward the Apple Apps. Oh, that's good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get back the get the warp drive turned back on here, and I want to circularize that orbit. I don't want to stay where this this looking like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and warp to the west. Once again, maintaining, largely maintaining the altitude over Jewel, but changing my latitude around it. Let's see, we got ourselves a nice, uh, nice looking little orbit around there. Okay, now, 
that is a quick demonstration of the quick way of doing things, okay? If you, uh, if you get towards Kerbal, and you notice that your um, you know, relative velocity relative to the planet where you're going is within the range tolerable, you can just go straight there. Alright, so now we want to go to Tylo. Tylo is orbiting Joule at 2,039 meters per second. And we'll go ahead and send that up, set that up as my, uh, my target here real quick. Now, I'm headed this way. Tylo is over here heading this way. I would warp straight over here, but that would go ahead and affect my orbit a little bit more than I want to. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is to change to change uh, the direction of my velocity vector. The direction I'm going to go ahead and uh, line it up real quick. I'm going to just go ahead and warp to this point, just through normal through normal warping. Oh, I may have messed that up. Yeah, I did. Okay. Why? What happened to Cappy? Well, guess what? 5.68 megameters. That's a little bit closer than my fail-safe distance. So, right idea, but I need to be a little bit further out. Let's see right now if I'm going to try to engage the drive. No, it ain't happening. Okay. I need to return over here to my Apple apps. Take another look here at the uh, at the orbit and re-engage the warp drive. And let's see, let's do let's do some western warp in here. Back to my chart here for Joule. 4339 is the speed at which I want to be uh, traveling you know, if, in order to have a uh, um, well, no, 3939 should get me uh, should get me a decent orbit. Let me go ahead and go out. Should stay, that should keep me where I can warp at any point in the orbit here. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this, try to circularize it a bit. Um, the wrong direction, let's go to the east. Okay. Okay, that's as good as I'm going to get. Okay. So now I'm a body orbiting Joule. I'm trying to get to Tylo. It's over here. I'm orbiting a lot faster than Tylo is. So let's see, what's my uh, velocity I want for Tylo? 1372. Okay, so 1372. Uh, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and warp over here. Dang, nab it. Uh, I want to warp over to this point. And we're going to try to get lined up with Tylo. That way, my direction of east is going to match its direction of east. Okay. Let's go ahead and go back over here to the periaps. Not right about here. Whatever. Let's warp here. Okay. Be able to see it. Okay, so now my east is equal to its to, to his east. Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to since I need to pick up since I need to lose velocity. I'm sorry. Since I need to lose velocity, I'm going to go ahead and well, damnation. I have no probe control. That's that's lovely. <sighs> okay. Um, I'm going to go probe right. Hold that direction. That is not what I wanted to do, but sometimes stuff like that happens. So anyway, I'm going to go east until uh, I've lined up with the planet. This way I'm going 
you know, straight towards it and straight. I'm going to be actually going straight away from it because I need, I'm going too fast. I need to lose speed, so I'm going to use the planet's gravity to help me do that. Okay, there's my. And the best way to do this now is to go ahead and warp straight toward the planet to fail save. So I'm just going to do a quick little. Uh, don't worry about it. I will be traveling, you know, straight away. I'm going to encounter Lathe again. Okay, I'm going to switch over to my target relative velocity. I'm going to go ahead and aim toward it. And once again, the target target is 1,372. Okay. One of the other things I can do here real quick is uh, set a cack alarm for about, you know, 10 minutes or so. Uh, we'll do that a raw time alarm, 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes time, if I'm, uh, if I'm not where I want to be on my uh, velocity, I can just warp back towards Jewel and do it again. This is the dread first method, by the way. A practical, practical way of doing it. Okay, I'm gonna re-engage the warp drive. I'm gonna throttle back towards Jewel. Until the drive shuts off. Damn it. Well, I screwed that up. <laughs> it's okay, it still works. Okay, once again, 1372. Okay, there it is. I'm at my target velocity now. I'm going to engage the warp drive, and off we go. Excellent. Okay. All right. And what I want to go ahead and do is I want to go ahead and try to circularize this orbit. I'm going to warp around to the east here. And I'll go ahead and warp down to the failsafe altitude, uh, which around Tylo is 900,000 meters for this for this size drive. Well, there we are. Never actually been, well, like I said, it hasn't been, it's been a few versions since I've been here. Got some weird stuff going on. What is good? Oh! <laughs> What do you call that? Um, I guess that's a transit of jewel over the over uh, Kerbal. All right. Well, I hope that uh, that covers all the basics. Um, if there is anything that uh, you guys have I've done here that you didn't quite understand, you want me to try to demonstrate again, you know, just give me a call or say something down in the comments. I, I will be checking that every now and again just to see what if anybody said anything. Uh, in the meantime, you know, good luck. I uh, hope that uh, hope you have found this informative.